Philologists have made a first classification of two Indo-European dialects into two groups according to the way which the initial constant or the word meaning hundred developed. The word began with a palatal, which among some peoples became a sibilant, while over others remained an occlusive. There are Statum peoples and Centum peoples. The Hindus say Katam, the Iranians say Satum, and the Lithuanians Skinhus, whereas the Latins say Centum. The Goths say Hund, the Irish say Cade, Ket now Cade, and the Welsh say Cant. Celtic, therefore, is one of the Centum languages. The value of the distinction appears problematic, and the attachment of Celtic to the Centum group is of little significance. If we remember that French, which is one of the hairs of, Ca of Celtic, has transformed Latin occlusive into a sibilant, but one should mention the matter. Now, let's consider the diagram for a minute. This diagram, devised by M. Melliot, shows the Indo-European languages grouped according to their affinities. At the same time, it shows their topop sorry, topographical distribution. The vertical diameter divides the Statum peoples from the Centum peoples. Each group is a continuous. The dialects of each have been spoken by peoples which were, are or were neighbours. We shall see the other evidences of their kinship. The symbol chosen is not perhaps the most expressive possible, but it is the thing symbolised as certain. One group is missing from the diagram, namely the Tocharians of Turkestan. They are surrounded by peoples which spoke um, the languages of the Satum type. Indian or Iranian spoke languages of the Centum type. But we have more and one reason for believing these uh, Tocharian dialects have affinities with the Western group of Indo-European languages. The slanting diameter which runs right across the diagram sets apart in the same half of the ellipse. The Balto Slavonic, Germanic, Celtic and Italic tongues. This grouping expresses a different kind of relationship from that which associates Greek with the three last named dialects to the left of the vertical diameter. The peoples of northwestern Europe had a certain number of roots in common, which the others lacked. They had bonds of civilization, a common life. It may be said, without much danger of error, that the Indo European languages have the same relationship to one another as the geographical areas which they cover. It is highly probable that the affinities of various kinds existing between the dialects fairly represent racial affinities of the peoples. As we follow up this comparison between the Celtic and the other Indo-European languages, two groups of languages seem, by the nature of things, to call for attention at the outset, namely to Germanic and Italian tongues. The former covered an area which was continually in contact with that of the Celtic languages, and it is also probable that Celtic and Italic were spoken in neighbouring regions before the Italici settled in their peninsula, and that the Gallic invasion of Italy merely revived contacts which had existed in prehistoric times. In view of the relationships which appear between the two family groups and Celtic, one might possibly regard them as one family. <coughs> The Western family of the indo european languages, which moreover will show considerable associations with two other neighbouring groups, the Baltic and the Slavonic, which belong to the Saturn group. For finding oneself to Celtic, Italic and Germanic, one might suppose that these three groups formed a single unit comparable, to some extent, to the formed by the Celtic languages amongst themselves, but more comprehensive and differentiated earlier and more completely. But the matter is not as simple as that. Of the phonetic and morpho morphological facts in which the relationship of these three linguistic groups is shown, some may perhaps date from the remotest past of Indo-European and be features of one of its dialects. But there are others which appear as absolute innovations, but the most important of which is the modification of the linguistic rhythm. Now, the rhythm is a very stable element of a language, and still more so of a way of speaking and pronouncing. In Indo-European, the accent of a word seems to have been very weak. It was musical. It fell everywhere, according to the sense. In Celtic and Italic, as in Germanic, the quality of rhythm of Indo-European deteriorated. 
The accent gradually became an accent of stress fixed in a definite place, usually the first syllable, which finally assumed as a preponderant position in the word. A fact of this kind may be attributed to the influence of foreign elements, probably in part to the same elements, entering in different proportions into the formation of the three groups of peoples concerned. Italic, which has changed its abode, resisted the tendencies at first, but finally succumbed to them. Germanic and Celtic, in the other hand, which remained in neighbouring regions, developed partly along parallel lines. The parallelism is most complete between Gaelic and Germanic. M. Elliot, in the work from which I have taken these remarks, points to other facts which seem to tell the same story. In phonetics, the weakness of the final in consequence of the strengthening and the initial, the alteration of intervocal consonants, the sensitive Sensi sorry, the sensitiveness of vowels to the influence of neighbouring phenoms. In morphology, the accentuation of the verb in of the notion of tense, which is shown by the creation of special forms to express the preterite, is shown by the creation of special forms to express the paratite and distinction of past subjunctive. These last observations are equally true of the Baltic languages. Moreover, the Western Indo-European languages have drawn on a co common vocabulary. They alone possess certain roots, certain forms of the same roots, or certain senses of which these roots may take. Latin hasta represents a Western root, which appears in Irish gas or sog. Gothic guz, goad, and Old High German gert or rod. Latin Uriro, spit, represents another which produced Irish burr, or point, Welsh burr, spear, and Gothic quiru. Irish fai, genitive faha, or bard, soothsayer, corresponds to Latin vates, and modern German v, wuten, and possibly votan. Here now is the name of an animal. Latin has marula, or blackbird, probably for misula. Welsh has Mylac, which comes from primitive Misalaco, and Old High German has Mesia. Modern German Amsel, blackbird, has a kindred root. A root V, which means to blow. Sanskrit Vati, he blows. Or Veu, wind. Lithuanian, Vahijas, wind. Assumes the same form of the participle in the Western tongues, the blowing one. Latin, Ventus, Gothic, winds, sorry, winds. Modern German wind, Welsh, Gwent, Irish, F, or Brett, is probably derived from the same root, but it is abnormal. A root, V, means to, to be, has given, been used for Western languages formation of the verb being Latin, Fui, I was, Irish, Who, is to be, or V. Modern German, Bin, Am, English B. It is complete concordance between Irish V and Latin Feo and all Saxon Wu. Let us now look at a case which various forms of one same root to show its continuality. Latin liquidus has a root vluk, which is uh, assumed with different forms, vl and vluk, from which Irish flucked or rain substance fluk, wet. Falk, a wave. Welsh, Ulje, wetness, Gwilp, modern German, Valk, or club. Old High German, Volka, represents a variety of the same root. The similarities of vocabulary form a very large mass of facts, which is comparable to similarities of Iranian and Sanskrit, and is still larger to be added to the other words as all appear in the Baltic and Slavonic languages, whose connections to the Western languages deserve to be considered altogether and more closely. So then, the Celtic seems to have been taken for, from a linguistic mass, which might be the remains of an Indo-European dialect, split into several fragments. But in the vocabulary, as in the grammar, the philologists try to discover the influence of foreign elements in the shape of words whose structure are not clearly Indo-European. They point to the word for apple, which is abal in Irish, aval in Welsh, and affel in modern German. The name of the town of Abella and the epithet of malifera, or apple bearing, which Virgil gives it, 
suggests that the italic once the word has had the word and then lost it is one of the words which also belong to Baltic and Slavonic. There's also a village named Abul in the island of Essel, or Slavonic has uh, Jabalko, Lithuanian has Abolas, and Old Prussian has Ubel. Apart from these features shared by Celtic, Italic and Germanic altogether, Celtic has some peculiarities in common with one or the other of these languages. Well, in some cases, one language of the group has had losses or a, or a development of its own. In others, there have been a special relations between two languages or the people who had spoken them. The Italic and Celtic tongues represent similarities of a structure which compel us to think that there were once a great many more but only disappeared after a separation which does not seem to have occurred very early. The resemblance is in the same order that that subsisting between the languages of India and the Iranian languages. That is, the two language groups to which the name of Aryan is at best confined. Now, I, we have a very strong evidence of a common Aryan stock around 1400 BC. In the inscriptions of Bukhaz Q, Indian and Iranian gods who afterwards became enemies, are mentioned together in the same invocation. There was one religion, one people, and a common language. No doubt it was the same with the Celts and the Italici. It is usual to speak of the Italo Celtic language and of an Italo Celtic stock. I have only to show that the separation took place a little earlier. The only Italic language of which we possess a complete vocabulary. Latin has absorbed a whole Mediterranean lingua franca as a result of being transplanted into Mediterranean life. Hence comes its kinship with Greek, obscuring its Celtic kinship. Nevertheless, many fragments of an Italian Celtic vocabulary remain in the Italic languages. There remain, for example, these important words, prepositions and prefixes to verbs. Latin, de, corresponds to Irish and Britannic, de. Latin, cum, to Irish and Britannic, or it is a strange coincidence that both groups have two forms in the same adjective to say other, one from a stem ala and the other one from the stem alio. The Italic group has alis and alid, whence alter, sorry, alter, from the former and alius and aliud from the latter. Celtic has two words, Welsh, il, and Irish, ala which resents their Latin equivalent letter for a letter. Il means the second, like alter. It is very logical of this duplication is what invites credence. There are semantic resemblances, morphological resemblance, common roots, common forms of the same root, common meanings. From a special root, ne, meaning do, Latin has kept a navus, Irish has new, I do, Nim, deed, Bognu, I serve, and Bognum, service. And Welsh has Gwini, serve, the root Gwi means life, given from Vita to Latin and Boid food to Brythonic. The root Ner, which appears in Sanskrit and Greek in words meaning man, appears in Irish as Nert or strength. Gaulish Nerton as in Nert Maris, and Sabna as Nereo. And with the same meaning in which the same Nereo, the wife Maris, and in Umbrian as Nerf. The date, is, that is, the strong ones. Tell responds to Irish Tyr, tell us to Irish Talam, and with Salicum from a stem Salito are connected Welsh Hol, Overton Hal, and the name of the Gallic goddess Salitocenia, and there are other instances. The phonetic and grammatical similarities are of even more weight. We should consider the chief resonance in phonetics to change from p to k and from k to k, which gave words of the quinic type to Latin and words of the k to type to Irish, and transformation of k to p in Britonic and Oscar Umbrian, when the time comes to extract its full significance. The grammatical similarities are morphological resemblances to declension and conjugation. 
the genitive of stems in all was formed in e. Sigamaros, Sigamara. In Old Irish, Maki was the genitive of Macus, and in Middle Irish, Fur was the genitive of Fur. The I is the root word of being the I of the last termination, where the existence of it provides evidence. In both groups, the superlative was formed by adding Samo, whence comes Latin Sim and Celtic Sam or Sim to the positive nearest is proxima in Latin, Nesimus in Oscan, Nesame in Umbrian, Nesam in Old Irish, and Nesif in Welsh. Modern German, on the other hand, says Nachta, and the other Indo-European languages have a formation in, S in Sanskrit, as Svilche, Old High German, Zusito, whence Suset. The verb systems of two groups, which are very different in the, from Indo-European and are in part refashioned from new sources, present the same innovations, would have the future in bo and two forms of the subjunctive, amabo and falskin carfo, like the Irish futures in f and b, lefa, ni legub, from ligangam, I read. Firm is equivalent to Irish bera, Faxum to Irish, Tayasu or Tess. The forms of the middle voice in reflects of meaning disappeared in Latin and the Celtic, whereas they survived to some extent in Germanic. To take its place, Latin and Celtic created what's called a Latin grammar, the deponent, or the inflection of which certain forms is marked by final or and the same in both languages down to the smallest detail. Lacor is Lavrur. Liquitor is Labriher. Liquinimer equals Labrimer. In Latin, the conjunction of the deponent is indistinguishable from the passive. Moreover, there are traces in Latin of impersonal passive. Itur, people go, quam color, to whom when it is hot. Umbrian had fur, that some people carry, so too Oscan had sacrifer, that sacrifice is made. There's only one passive that Celtic has. The Irishman, for example, says burr, it is carried, or someone carries. To express the first or second person passive in the personal pronoun is added, either before or after the verb. In the accusative as a complement, Irish, nun burr, is me who is carried. Blant or made, who is, Irish, no burr, it is me who is carried. Blant or made, who is, it is me, the, him who is purified. It is the same in Brythonic. Middle Welsh, I make welfar, I am thou art called. And in more, modern Welsh, one can say, Fem disker, Fe disker, as well as disker fim di, for I am thou art taught. The impersonal passive indicates that the section of the verb is being done or has been done. In this respect, it resembles another form, whose termination also contains an or, namely the third person plural. Of the preterite. Celtic has the same equivalent in its form. It has two paratites, a sigmatic paratite and a, a sigmatic uh, additive stem. Lexit, the read from lame, legum, and a radical paratite formed directly from the root word, which is either reduplicated or lengthened. This latter paratite makes the third person plural by adding R to termination int. For example, lingam, I leap, roll balangator, they leapt, or they leaped. But here we find ourselves in wider ground, for there is a plural in Sanskrit, as tiran, they held themselves. The R is plural of sitha, to hold oneself. This usage in its extension constitutes a fairly large system, but one which is on the decline, and the fact that it survives in more complete form in Italo Celtic than elsewhere is one of our best evidence of Italic Celtic uh, unity. There is, however, one other language which represents the same feature, with few differences, namely uh, Tocharian. Again, Italic and Celtic are at the one in the formation of the passive paratite. It is composed of the same noun form, the adjective in t. Latin, cantatus a. Eh, 
So too Irish says Brockett from Canyon. It was sung. These are facts of great significance. The common in invocations of the mechanism of the verb, or the that chief element in the sentence. The common loyalties to absolute, sorry, obs obsolete forms. The kinship and life together attested thereby must be regarded as an established fact before we start to look for the first home of the Celtic peoples and to study how they divided. We shall come across it more than once in the course of this work. The special affinities of Celtic and Germanic are quite different. Here agreements in vocabulary are far more interesting than phonetic or grammatical similarities. Indeed, examination of the two grammar reveals considerable gulf between the two groups of languages. There are capital differences in the declension of the substantive and adjective. In Indian Japan, nouns whose stem formed by the addition of O or A to the root of their plural in S, while the O became or A became long. For example, equus, equus, Sanskrit, avga, ava. For this termination, Greek, Slavonic, Latin, and Celtic substitute the old termination of pronouns. Popla, popli, Gaulish, Dansla, Noi, Germanic alone of European languages remains faithful to the ancient form. Gothic, fiscus, or fishes, Anglo Saxon, fiscus, hence, comes to the plural in R of Old Scandinavian and in R of Danish. Germanic and the Slavonic languages have different inflections for the adjective according to the adjective is, as it's called, determinate or indeterminate. Old Slavonic, Lithuanian and Germanic agree in marking the data plural of the declension by termination of which N mm, is the characteristic feature. Gothic, Wolfam, two wolves, Lithuanian, Vilkum, Osibonic, Vilkumu. The superlative in the Germanic languages was formed in accordance with the Indo European type, as we have seen above. In Old High German, had Cisco, modern German, Sussist, like in Sanskrit, Savitist, whereas Italic and Celtic had adopted in form in, in Amo. Or Samo. Germanic, therefore, had distinguished from the Celtic languages by peculiarities, some of which it shares with no other European language, while others connected with the Baltic Slavonic languages of the north. It, is also, it, has also, sorry, it has also peculiarities which mark it off from the Indo European languages. There it is famous for mutation of consonants, and their quite special property of its verb forms. Germanic, while expressing the notion of time very vigorously, like other Western tongues, has cut down the Indo European verb to two tense forms, one for the present and one for the past, sufficient to supply words for the singular and plural, and for the indicative and subjunctive. It is a cut down language, a language which has been learnt. The same hypothesis as factory in explained two facts. But if we must accept this hypothesis of the adoption of the Indo-European language by the ancestors of the Germans, it is not possible, as those who adopted the thought, at first, that the language borrowed was Celtic, or even at first, that the language borrowed was Celtic, or even Italo-Celtic. Really, the German borrowed from more than one Indo-European language, Italo-Celtic among them. Yes, different as they are in grammatical structure, the two families of languages show the most significant likeness in the vocabulary. These have been frequently pointed out and interpreted. The name of the sun is common to both. In modern German, it is Sun, Old High German Sonne. In Welsh, Juan, which in Sun is feminine. The colony calendar gives the word Synocleus, which clearly contains the same word. Celtic and certain Germanic dialects also had the same root of Sol, in common with Latin. An important group of common topographical terms, meaning the ground, accents of the ground, is a adaption of the ground to human life and is of some interest because it may tell of a life lived in common in the same region. English floor, modern German floor, 
is the same word as the Irish lar and Welsh lor. It is from the ancient lars, Gothic wags used to translate an old Icelandic fangram, which field which related to Irish fa, meaning territory. Gothic snips wrote, whereas Gassin servants, the Irish, the people who accompany you on your way, is the same as Irish sit and Welsh hint. Modern German rain, ridge, Old High German rain, meaning rampart of earth, boundary between field and wood, is the same as Irish roan, road and Gaelic roan, field. It gives us a, vis a vision of rather swampy country, whose roads can only be on raised embankments. English wood is the same word as Gaulish vidu, which appears in viducasus, or vidubium, Irish fid, and Welsh gwid. These words mean trees, timber, a forest. There are many technical terms to names of materials such as metals and instruments. Modern German, Essin, Gothic, Essarn, and the same Gaulish, Essarno, Irish, Arn, and Welsh, Harn. Old Germanic, Loth, English, Led, is the same as Irish, Louis. Modern German also has a word, lay, as of a certain origin. So one can make up a long list of words which are both peculiar and common to Celtic and to Germanic, or more correctly, the whole extent of the Germanic world. These words are substantives. Do they come from a common parent tongue? Were they borrowed from one language from the other? They are words both Celtic borrowed from Germanic, but that happened quite late and we do not need to linger over them. They are, in particular, the words which Irish took from the Scandinavian tongues in the time of the Vikings. They are authenticated cases of borrowing by Germanic from Celtic. First of all, there is a series of words which have not undergone the Germanic permutation of consonants and were probably borrowed after that practice had ceased, or at least after it ceased to affect spelling. Gaulish, Karuka, which comes from French Karu, or Plow, gave to Old High German Kuru, Modern German Kark. Gaulish, Celtian, or Tower, upper story, had taken over unchanged by Gothic. Modern German, Ferd, Old High German, Ferfret, comes from Gaulish, Paraverdus. We should note that the great number of words dealing with horses and vehicles are common to Germanic and Celtic, and there is every chance that the world that the former had got them from latter. English breaches, Old Icelandic Brock, comes from the Gaulish, Braca. The other words that borrow from Germanic after Celtic had lost P. German land comes from Celtic Landa, which pronounced Irish Lan and Welsh Lan. In the Middle Ages, it meant both wasteland and the ground surrounding a church. It comes from the root planus. German leader, a ladder, or sorry, leather, comes from a Celtic word represented by Irish la, laher, or Welsh leather. The root contained the P of the Latin pellis and English fell. In the presence of these facts, some scholars like Darbos and de Juvenal had led to suppose that many words were borrowed before a Germanic permutation of consonants took place or the Celtic languages lost P. Among these terms common to both groups of languages, there is a whole series of political, legal, and military words. Some of them were certainly borrowed from Celtic, and it is hard to deny that all were. Gaulish and Baptist, meaning servant, both in a sense that tended towards that of minister, gave OHG, Ambant, and the same, or Old High German, Ambat, and the same meaning of German Amt. Gothic Rex, our prince, and Recce, kingdom, comes from the Gaulish Rees and Regan, Irish Riga, but not from the Indo European Rex and the same associated word. The Indo European A would come from an A in German. The semblance of both following words explained in the same way. Irish, uh, Germanic, eat, English, oat. Irish, lug, laot, German, luga, marriage. Here, the borrowed word has been given a more special meaning. Irish, fina, family, old type, German, winnie, husband. Old Scandinavian, winner, means friend, the same in specialization. Welsh, rid, free, modern Germanic, fry. Irish gal, hostage, modern German, Giesel. Irish arba, inheritance, modern German erba. Irish erlichen, I tend, 
I'm sorry, Island represents a Celtic word corresponding to Gothic Livian and modern Germanic Lehen Lend. Orbitonic Gruss value price represents the prototype of Gothic verse or modern Ger German word value. Modern German ban order comes from a Celtic word represented by Irish for bander, uh, legal order. Now for terms of warfare. Modern German boot comes from a Celtic word bootie, which is found in the same form of bootica. Irish boot, victory, and Welsh boot, prey, booty. Modern German bruna, breastplate, comes from a Celtic word represented in Irish bruna and Welsh brun, or chest. The war song of the Germans, the Bardatus, bears the name of the origin which perceived through Welsh Bardwit, the science of the Bards. It was a song sung by the Germanic Bards. In all ages, as we know, best equipped and best ordered troops had supplied others with their military vocabulary. The similarities of the Celtic and Germanic vocabularies bear witness to a long period during which they lived together. If we suppose that the Celts and the Germans ever spoke the same language, their intercourse went on after their dialects were separated. But it is hard to believe that they were ever brothers in speech, in view of the different structures of the languages. Probably that they were only brothers by adoption. The most characteristic instance is quote may be by explained by borrowing from Germanic from Celtic. They are the borrowing of a people who goes on to other for things and ideas of civilization, or things and ideas designated by substantives. The Celts seem to have been for long ages the schoolmasters of the Germanic people. Perhaps one may go further still. I am very much inclined to believe that one cannot dismiss the hypothesis, which had already been put forward particularly by Darbar de Jubilu, that some political relations existed between the Germans and Celts. Whatever may have been their nature, alliance, domination, or the formation of a common Reich, or whatever they are extent. So relations of Celtic and Germanic are a very different kind to those of the Celtic and Italic. In the latter case, we have two languages born of a parent tongue, which lie not far very behind, and in the other, the formation of a common stock of words due to contact of two people, one of which may have influenced the other at different times, in any case from an early period, and without their ever ceasing to be neighbours. In this influence of Celtic on Germanic, it may not be possible to determine the proportionate share of each of the Celtic uh, dialects. The ancestors of the Irish may well have been in contact with the Germans, no less than the Britons and the Gauls. Secondly, the borrowed words are found in the Eastern and Northern dialects of Germanic, such as Scandinavian and Gothic, as well as the Southern and Western. All the Celtic words influenced by all by the Germanic world. Its influence extended even beyond and through the Germans to the Balto Slavs and the Finns.